I love the reptile hobby and I want everyone to enjoy it. But if you want it to stick around, you need to stop doing this. Okay, that was pretty strongly worded. You need, I feel like someone's mother. What I mean is there are five things, in my opinion, that we are doing that are contributing or giving ammunition to those animal rights groups who are trying to take away our reptiles. And very first, I'm not against animal rights groups. I'm just against the ones that say, oh, all snakes are killers and therefore we should ban. You understand what I'm saying. There's a bunch of bans going through. There's a bunch of bans that are proposed. None of them make any sense. Bans do not work. And the people behind them and the people responsible for tabling them have no interest at all in anything besides taking away your reptiles. So these are the five things I think that we can improve on in the hobby that will ensure that the next generation can enjoy it the same way we do. So I'll break it down into five things to make it easily digestible and fun to watch super quick. Starting with number five, infighting. And what I mean by infighting is fighting amongst each other publicly on the internet like a bunch of silly gooses. Nothing makes somebody or a group of people look more ununited and unorganized than fighting with each other about something that they both love. It makes us look stupid. Why do people infight? Because they like to either hate on somebody for something they've done or they wanna show somebody how much more they know than you. It's one of these kind of measuring contests, if you know what I mean. And it's stupid. What you should do if you see something, or in my opinion, if you see something that is super suspect on the internet, on a Facebook group or Reddit or whatever, is message the person and talk to them. Don't attack them publicly. Don't jump in and start attacking people publicly and piling on. You look dumb. Stop doing it and you make all of us look dumb. The thing with me is that I am smart and I'm smart, I'm self-smarted basically by myself. Because this is the num like 1%. So I'm kind of preaching to the choir because I'm sure you don't do this if you watch this video. Otherwise you wouldn't watch videos like this because you wouldn't care. But anyone who does care about this community doesn't do this. Nobody who cares about this community is fighting on the internet and calling people names and attacking people who have like on their Instagram or whatever. It's just silly because something that these animal lobbyist groups like to use is like, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. This is a group of people dedicated to this and they don't know what they're talking about. Look, the right hand doesn't know what the left hand's doing. Now I know this might seem stupid, but it's not. It seems pretty obvious that we need to unite and be a strong type of family and kind of keep this hobby alive rather than fighting with each other to prove who knows what. If you don't agree with somebody and you think they're doing something wrong, message them. Don't fight with them on the internet publicly. People are willing to listen and change if you are giving constructive criticism and not being a jerk to them every time. Well, maybe not every time, but if you're being a jerk to someone, they'll never listen to you, period. Number four, talking about animals like they are commodities. Now, I see nothing wrong with making a living breeding animals. There is nothing wrong with selling animals that you've produced, as long as you do it in an ethical way and you're not putting the money first. Again, preaching to the choir, I don't think you do this. I know I don't do this. I make zero dollars selling animals. I pay more to breed because it's a hobby for me than I make. And there's nothing wrong with that either, as long as you are going about it the right way. I'm not gonna beat this dead horse, it's just a simple thing. Don't talk about animals like all that matters is the money. I'm only breeding this animal because, I'm only breeding spider ball pythons because it brings in a lot of money. There's gotta be a better reason than it brings in a lot of money. If you're breeding to get rich, you're in the wrong hobby, my friend. You are gonna spend way more money before you make a dollar than you would ever expect. So. This is mostly for people who are new to breeding and very, very few of them. Most of us love animals and that's why we do it and that is the right reason to do it. Number three, breaking laws. Now this seems like, okay, I get it. Not a lot of laws or at least there are a lot of laws that do not make sense. I totally agree with this. Saskatchewan banned ball pythons, a place where it snows for six months and ball python has never killed anybody. What are we doing? It makes it seem like they're arbitrary laws and a lot of them are. Here's how some of those laws go into effect. 
I live in a place where a neighboring town, a few years back, an alligator got out of someone's basement, got hit by a car, it got a huge story in the newspaper, and then the next month, we outlawed crocodilians in that place. Well, to be fair, I'm pretty sure they were already outlawed, but they started outlawing and starting to put a bylaw banning other species. So even though crocodilians were already in the bylaw that you could not keep them, they're just like, ah, crocodilians, ah, what else can we tack onto this? It brought something to the surface that wasn't there before. You're bringing someone's attention to something that really you shouldn't be. Another more famous case from a few weeks ago, or maybe a month ago, was that kid in the US, I think it was South Carolina, I'll correct it if I'm wrong, that had a zebra cobra escape, didn't say anything about it, had a big platform on TikTok, and now, I think he got out of jail time, but there's a massive fine, he got all of his animals taken away, and they're trying to push through new legislation or bylaws or whatever it is that they're doing to ban reptiles. Yeah, I don't know exactly. The le they're going through a legal proceeding to try to ban more reptiles. And do you know why? Because this kid was careless. He was careless. So if you are careless and you break laws, even if they don't make sense, you're hurting the hobby. If you get caught especially. So don't keep things that you're not supposed to just because you know the law doesn't make sense. Instead, try to change the law. Write to whoever it is that's responsible for these things. If it's your city council or whoever it is that takes care of these votes and takes care of these things, write into them, ban with your reptile family, and try to make progress. Because they actually did in Saskatchewan. There's a whole bunch of things they're allowed to keep now that they weren't before. And that didn't happen because a bunch of people broke the law. So I'm just saying, I mean, I know it sucks, but don't be a silly goose. Don't be the bad apple that ruins the bunch. Number two thing we're doing to ruin the hobby, getting in over our heads. I wanna make something very clear. I'm not coming down on you if you're part of this club or have been. In fact, I'm only coming down on you if you know it and you're doing nothing about it. This is what I mean. If you have more reptiles than you can take care of and because of that, you are neglecting some of your animals, you're a terrible person if you realize it and do nothing about it, but it can happen and you don't realize it until one day you get so burnt out, you just can't manage anymore. So before that point happens, reevaluate what you're doing. Did you get a species that maybe you're not ready for? It takes too much of your time. Did you get a new job? Did you start school? Is there a reason why you might be in over your head? And it happens, I get it. I love reptiles, I wish I could keep one of everything. But the reason I don't keep one of everything and the reason that although I bought a very expensive enclosure for a tag and I don't have one, is I wanna make sure with the new reptile room, the new responsibilities that I have with the changes in my life, I'm gonna be able to keep good care of a tag you. It is killing me, I want one so bad, but I wanna make sure this new responsibility and these new things I've taken on in life, I can manage, and then I'm going to get a tagu. Just responsible pet ownership 101. So basically, don't get species that you know you can't take care of or afford, and that's the other thing. If you're getting one over your head and you can't afford it, you gotta sell it. Don't get something you know you can't afford. And I mean, just overall, if you have too many animals, hire someone to help you, or if you can't do that, maybe rehome some. But don't just live in constant, ah, I gotta work, I gotta work. Live in a place where it's fun to take care of your animals and it doesn't seem like a job that you're not even making money at. Don't treat it like it's a responsibility that you must have. It's not, it's a privilege and it could be taken away from us if we get in over our heads. The number one thing that I think we're doing to ruin the hobby is something that you will not see coming. You can guess right now, what do you think I'm gonna say? It's actually something that I truly believe. Number one, pushing new keepers out of the hobby. Now, not only is it rude to push new people out of the hobby, to act like a big shot, to make fun of people who ask questions that you know the answer to, it's also stupid. Because guess what? The only way that a hobby is going to grow is if it has new people coming in every year and more of them than the year before. The greatest example that I like to use is mixed martial arts. 20 years ago, they were doing shows in like two states, because that's all it was legal in, for 2,000 people in the crowd. This year, the highest paid athlete in the world was an MMA fighter. And the reason for that is because that community 
grew. And the reason that they grew is because they had a bunch of new people coming in and it was fun for them. As soon as a hobby like keeping reptiles is no longer fun or you get a bad taste in your mouth at the beginning, not only do you not participate in that hobby, but you get a bad taste in your mouth and maybe you don't like it. Maybe you've got a different perspective than you could have and maybe you're not on our team anymore. And by our team, I mean responsible pet owners that want to push this hobby to other responsible pet owners or people that could be. Get them while they're young. Be nice to new keepers. And I'm not saying young like kids. I just mean people who are uninitiated, who are getting into this hobby. Why would you be rude to them? It doesn't make any sense. Just be nice. And I see this all the time from a very small group of individuals who are just rude to people on the internet about snakes or reptiles or whatever for no reason. It makes no sense. Let's not have a toxic hobby. There's no reason for it. We've got enough challenges as it is. Most people in the world think snakes are icky. So why aren't we trying to convert more of those people? The more people we have loving snakes and reptiles, the more people are gonna be open-minded and willing to open their eyes. So all you're doing by pushing away new keepers is putting this hobby in a dangerous and much worse place. <sighs> okay, I'm just gonna step off my soapbox very casually here. This was probably a shorter video. I hope you would have enjoyed it. All I was trying to say in this one is simply, be kind, be nice, be responsible, and stop hurting the hobby in any way that you can help it. And all I'm trying to say here is use common sense. All of these things are common sense things. I don't own the key. I don't have any secret knowledge on how to save the hobby. I just am part of the hobby. I have been for over a decade and I see the things that I think contribute to negative stigma about reptiles and negative stigma about reptiles is what lobby groups that want to take them away from us use as ammunition. So that's it. I wanna say thank you for hitting like and subscribe. If you want more videos like this, which are kind of like rant style, throw a like down there. That's how I know you enjoyed it and you want more of these. And as always, thank you so much to the Patreon supporters. You guys are freaking amazing. You get videos early, extra content, behind the scenes footage. You know about some of the collabs that I've done that haven't been out on the channel yet. And for as little as $1 a month, you can be part of that too. And I think that's it. Diamond's ready. Salad time, Diamond? All right. Because I do videos twice a week, that means I'll see you on Monday or Thursday. How do I get it wrong Thursday? I'll see you on Thursday. <laughs>